there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint and Sip, and this is Paint and Sip at Home. All right, so today we're going to be painting Sunset Lighthouse. I'm going to be sipping on some Pinot Noir, so let's get painting and let's get sipping. All right, so what we're going to use for the materials today is a stretched and primed 16 by 20 canvas. You can get this at any of your local craft stores or get it online, and of course you can switch up the size, but that's what I'm going to be using. I will be using acrylic paint, and the colors I'm going to be using today are titanium white. Uh, this is ultramarine blue, fluorescent orange, this is deep yellow. This is burnt umber, which I will call brown. This is green oxide and Mars black. And of course you can switch up those colors, but that's what I'm gonna be using. I'm using three brushes today. The brushes I'm gonna use, this is a number 14 filbert brush. I have a number 12 round brush and a number zero round brush. And you might hear me refer to these as small, medium, and large as we go through the process. I will also have a cup of water for washing my brushes, a paper towel for drying my brushes, and I will also be um, putting down in the description below a downloadable image of the final painting. So you can print that and use that as you go along through your painting process as reference. Um, and I'll also have text of the step-by-step -step instructions. And that's all you're gonna need today. All right, so what we're gonna do for the first step is the sky. I'm gonna use my large filbert brush and I'm gonna be using white, blue, orange, and yellow. And how I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna start it as blue and white up at the top and then I'm gonna come down to more of a lighter color and then as I get down towards the bottom of the sky, I'm gonna use the sunsetty colors which will be the orange and the yellow. Um, I'm gonna bring this down about three quarters of the way down my canvas. It doesn't have to be an exact spot, you just wanna fill a whole lot of that sky. So I am gonna start with blue and white on my brush, and I'm gonna be using a left to right, almost like a long crisscross kind of motion. Um, and by doing this, what'll happen is it will um, allow you to almost represent or have the illusion of these like wispy clouds kind of going by. Um, I don't use a lot of paint um, in this step and the reason being is I like it to kind of dry fast and it, that allows me to paint layers over layers as I go through this process. So you can see I've got you know some light spots and some dark spots. I just picked up white right now and I didn't pick up any more blue. Um, and the reason I'm doing that is I want that blue to kind of work its way off of my canvas a little bit without, um, without turning it totally white. And now I've got a good amount of light area. I still have a touch of that blue left on my brush, so I'm still gonna utilize that. And now that I've got, come down almost halfway, I'm gonna start introducing the orange. And I'm not washing my brush, and I'm gonna go into the orange first because I know I have blue on my brush, and if I were to go straight into the yellow with blue on my brush, then I would end up with a big green sky, and I don't want a big green sky. So you can see I'm pushing my brush a little bit harder now, and the blue is turning some of that orange into a beautiful, like, nice purpley color, which I think is really reminiscent of a nice, um, beautiful sunset and now I have orange and yellow on my brush so I'm going to start introducing the orange or the yellow now along with white I picked up yellow and white and you're going to notice that as I do these colors as I'm transitioning into the next colors I work my way back up the canvas and what happens is I'm able to get these sunset colors to naturally work their way into that sky above. And you can really play with this as much as you want. Um, as that paint is drying, you can continue to work these colors in. I wanna go a little bit further down my canvas, so I'm picking up orange, yellow, and white. 
And in a minute, I'm gonna pick up a touch of blue also, cause I wanna, like right now, I just picked up a little bit of blue. I want there to almost look like there's these um, little low-lying clouds throughout that sky. So I'm just kind of using a touch of blue, maybe a little bit of white down here. And as long as you don't have too much yellow and blue on your brush, you can get away with putting some blue down here. Like right now I'm picking up a little bit of blue and orange, and that's gonna do a really pretty, um, like a dark purple kind of color. And that also, it makes it look like there's little low-lying clouds or the haze of the sky is just kind of dropping down beneath the, um, the horizon line, which we'll be putting in in a minute. Touching my brush a little bit into white, getting myself maybe a little bit of wispy clouds kind of going by here. And again, you can really have fun with this and just kind of keep playing with these layers and keep playing with the, the darkness of the, of the clouds or how much you want them to kind of work together. Maybe you want yours to be really, really bright at the bottom of the sky. That's completely up to you. It's a visual preference, so you can just kind of keep adding these little layers onto here. Um, I'm kind of digging this. I think I'm gonna pull it up just a little bit more here on the left-hand side, just to get these colors to extend farther into the sky a little bit. Get myself a couple of little wispy kind of clouds just flying by there. And then we are gonna use this brush for the next step, but you're gonna to wanna to wash it and dry it. So once you get this sky as colorful as you want. And you can see I'm just kind of adding a little bit of these light clouds right over that blue. And once you get it, the, the shades that you want, what you can do, and you can bring it down far enough. I'm just gonna bring mine down just a little bit more because I do want it about two or three quarters of the way down. Um, once you get it down here, you can go ahead and wash and dry that big brush. And, sorry, I want some more color down here and then you can just get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step, I'm gonna use that same large filbert brush. I'm going to be painting my ground, the first layer, and I'm gonna be using just black paint. Um, as you're painting, I'm gonna start at the bottom. As you're painting um, the main area of it, you don't need any particular brush stroke. The black is a very, um, it covers really well, so you don't need to use any fancy brush stroke because it, you just need a solid color. Um, but when you get up to the, the sky, um, you're gonna wanna have an uneven horizon line. So you don't want a really clean, straight line going across. So I'm getting just about there right now. And what I'm gonna do with my brush, once I get this whole area covered, is I want mine kind of tipped, maybe like there's a little hill over here. So I'm gonna load my brush with black, and as I go through this, I'm just gonna kind of, I want this to maybe start up a little bit on this side, and I'm really just kind of wiggling my brush. So this way it has these uneven edges to it. Um, I don't want it to be a really clean, clean line. I want this to look like it's outdoors and it's got some, you know, maybe some overgrowth. Um, we're gonna have some big um, foreground pieces of grass later and this is gonna add to the depth illusion to it. So I'm really just kind of pushing and wiggling my brush. You can have some, some high spots and some low spots. I think I want mine a little bit taller up here, maybe like a little hill, so I'm gonna just kind of rise this up a little bit more. And then we are going to be switching to your medium brush for the next step. So once you get this ground all nice and complete, um, you can put this larger brush away in your water cup and take out your medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna do the first layer of the lighthouse. I'm gonna be using three colors, white, black, and brown, and I'm actually going to pre-mix a medium gray color. So I went white, a little bit of black, and a touch of brown, and I'm just gonna spin those around. I like using brown in my gray because I like a nice warm gray. 
um, especially when you're doing a sunset like this it will just help to give you a nice um, base for our um, for the lighthouse and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw and color in a shape for my lighthouse it's going to resemble a triangle with a flat top so for me I'm going to have mine a little bit to the right of the center and I'm going to have it um, come about halfway the height is going to be about halfway between the top of my canvas and wherever my land meets so my height is going to be somewhere about here and what you can do is you can make yourself a horizontal line that's maybe about I don't know an inch inch and a half wide and then you're going to make a diagonal line down to the land so if you want it skinny you don't bring it out at a far angle. If you want it wide at the base, then you bring it really far out. So you, you can have a nice tall slender one or a short wide one, it's totally up to you. Um, and then on the other side, you just want to make sure you kind of keep it at a similar angle. So I'm going to start here and then I'm going to bring it off at hopefully a similar angle. Then you're going to color it in. You can see my head is going back. I'm trying to see if I uh, if I got it straight. It's a little tough for me to tell when I'm working from the side over here. Um, but you can always modify it a little bit. And you're going to bring it right down into that black area. It doesn't, you don't want it to be a super perfect line. So I'm just really kind of wiggling my brush as it hits that, um, that black area down below. And you just want to make sure you have a nice good coverage and then we are going to use this same brush for the next step but you're going to want to wash it and dry it so once you get that all colored in just wash and dry that medium brush and get ready for the next step all right so what we're going to do for the next step is we are going to use our medium 12 round brush uh, we're going to be doing the first layer to the grass and I'm going to be using black paint only so I'm using the black paint as um, the shadows and the silhouettes for the pieces of grass. And I'm going to have it shorter on this side and I'm going to have really long pieces on this side. So the idea here is when this is all said and done, you want a lot of this grass to look like it's in the foreground or we are closest to it. Um, and if you want to have a little bit more dimension, you can put little pieces over by your um, lighthouse. So I'm going to start with little pieces and work my way to the bigger pieces. So I have black paint on my brush and one of my tips to having small lines with a brush this size is you can take it and spin it in your in your paint on the side of your palette and it repoints every time. And you always want to make sure that you have a lot of paint on your brush and one of my tricks for doing natural looking grass is you don't hold your brush tight. So if you hold it tight, you're going to end up with a whole bunch of straight lines. So if what I do is I hold it loose, almost like, you know, a loose pencil or whatever. And then I, I'm flicking it kind of in an upward motion. Um, and I do want to maintain an uneven horizon line here. So if you have any areas that are really straight, just add a couple little pieces of grass in there. And then I'm going to continue to do this over here. And you can go up or down um, with your flicking motion, whatever works for you. And sometimes if you feel like your paint is a little dry, you can always add a touch more water to it. And that's going to help um, have more of a fluid motion to those pieces of grass. And again, these are going to look like they're in the foreground when by the time we're done and we only need to put the ones up at the top right now because it's not going to make sense to put black on black down at the bottom um, but when we put the highlight colors on later you'll be able to see those and then I'm going to start coming in on this side and this is where I'm going to start to get my pieces of grass really long and what's going to happen is I'm going to have some coming out from the side of my canvas so these are meant to look like they are really up close to us. Maybe we're somewhere by the ocean and these are the wild pieces of grass that just kind of grow in the, the over brush over on the little hillsides. 
um, and I'm really just going to have fun with the the length of these. Uh, maybe you've even got some really coming off the top. Just make sure that you have them coming at different angles. You don't want them to all come off at the same angle. And you can have some, again, really long ones. And I'm going to put these um, some little, almost like wheat kind of accents to the tips of some of these pieces of grass. And how I'm going to do that, let me just put a couple more pieces over here. How I'm going to do that is I am going to take this brush, I spun it in my paint again, and I'm going to do uh, multiple pieces coming off of one strand of grass. And I'm not going to do this on every one. I'm just going to selectively pick a couple of pieces of grass where I almost um, fill out the top portion of it with a couple of extra pieces of, I don't know if you want to call them grass or just little fluffs at the end of those um, some pieces of grass. And I'm going to do that on both sides. Um, you, they, they might end up looking like little flowers or like the ends of maybe, I don't want to say a corn stalk, but that um, almost silky stuff that you might find at the end of a corn stalk or maybe like cattails. Um, you find those a lot on these long pieces of grass. Um, and they don't necessarily have to look like they're on the just the ends. You could, you know, put a couple of little ones in here. But again, don't overdo it. Um, just kind of feel what you, you know, whatever looks kind of appropriate to you, then that's going to work. Um, and that's looking pretty decent to me. So I'm going to call it on this step. Um, and the next step, we're going to switch brushes to the small brush. So once you get the silhouette of your grass, you can put the medium brush away in your water cup and take out your small brush and get ready for the next step. All right. So what we're going to do for the next step with our small brush is we're adding the top to our lighthouse and the window to our lighthouse. So I'm going to start with just black. I'm using my small brush, my number zero. And what I'm doing is I'm in essence, again, kind of putting a silhouette for them. You can decorate the top of your lighthouse whatever way you want. Um, the primary goal here is you, there's usually some kind of lookout at the top of the lighthouse and you need a spot for the light to shine out of. So in essence, kind of a big window or um, like a balcony kind of thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a horizontal line a little bit below the top of where I already have the top of it. And I'm going to extend that line a little bit further out past my lighthouse. And again, if you water down your paint a little bit and don't press hard, you're just using the tip of your brush, that's going to give you a nice small line. So once I do that, then what I can do is I can do um, another line. I mean, and this is just kind of an improv. You can decorate it whatever way you want, but I'm going to, I'm going to put another horizontal line right at the top. Then I'm going to do a bunch of vertical lines and I'm going to consider this is going to be kind of my lookout spot. If somebody were to climb up to the top of the lighthouse, this might be the little balcony kind of area that they sit on or stand on to look out. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a couple more um, vertical lines. This is going to kind of close in where my light portion is going to go. I'm going to do a horizontal line here that's maybe going to overhang it a little bit. And again, you can decorate this whatever way you want. And then I'm going to maybe put two more vertical lines in here. Again, I'm just kind of improv -ing. This is where my light is going to go later. And then I'm going to put some kind of topper on it. So I think I'm going to do kind of a an oval and maybe a little point up at the top. I'm going to color mine in with black. And then once I have it colored in, 
Well, let's go do the window first. We're still using black. I'm gonna go find a spot for my window and I'm just gonna do maybe a, um, a rectangle. And again, you could have a bunch of windows on here. I'm just gonna do maybe one. I'm gonna put my rectangle and then what I'm gonna do, and it could just be as simple as a rectangle, but I like to have a little, a little overhang at the bottom. Um, then I'm gonna put a little highlight on it. So once you have the black, then I'm gonna use white, orange, and yellow, and I'm going to accent part of this. So I'm gonna just kind of do these little bit of light spots. And if your paint is too wet, you can certainly just wait for it to dry. And you can do those later, but I'm using white, yellow, and orange, and maybe a little bit of a highlight on the top of my, of my building. And that's gonna do it for that step. Uh, what we're gonna do for the next step, we're gonna go back to using that medium brush. So once you have the topper on your lighthouse and your window, you can put your small brush away in your water cup and take out your medium brush for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for this step is we're finishing the base of the lighthouse, which means I'm gonna put a highlight, oops, a highlight and a shadow on it. I'm gonna be using my medium brush, the number 12, and the colors that I'm gonna be using are my original gray, I will be using white, orange, yellow, and black. And how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna decide which side of my lighthouse I think is the sun is setting on. So for me, I think mine's kind of setting on the right side. Yours might look like it's setting on the left side. So you've gotta make that decision on your own. So I'm gonna put my highlight on the right side and my shadow on the left, and the middle is gonna kind of remain my gray color. Um, my highlight is going to consist of my sun setting colors. So it's going to have the white, yellow, and orange on it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put white, yellow, and orange on my brush at the same time. And I recommend that you don't use a lot of paint to start. You can always add more, but it's tough to take off um, once, it's on your, once it's on your canvas. And then I'm going to go down the right, maybe if I put my hand like this, you can see it better. I'm going to go down the right hand side of my lighthouse and it's okay if you hit your grass don't worry about that you can always um, you can always modify that later and it's okay if you hit your window a little bit you can always put the window back on top and then I'm just going to kind of get it to blend in with that gray so if you want a more dramatic look to it you can certainly add more white make it a little bit more brighter you bring it into whatever level of brightness that you want. Um, and then you, you want to fade it into the gray. So however bright you want that right hand side, once it's on there, you start fading it into the gray. And what you can do, don't wash your brush, just pick up some of that original gray. And you can just kind of work it in. Sometimes you can use a touch of water on your brush and that will help to um, get them to blend a little bit better but sometimes the water if you use too much that can hurt your hurt your progress too um, and then as you go towards this left hand side I'm going to continue to use my gray until I get it nice and faded in and once I feel like it's all nice and faded in now I'm going to start to use my gray with a touch of black. Not much, but I do want this left-hand side to be the darkest. So I added a tiny bit of black to my brush with that gray, and that's going to provide this darkness over on this left-hand side. And then I want that to blend into the original gray. So if you need to wash some of that black off your brush or just pick up some of that original gray and you want to just kind of get it to blend 
right in with it. And it might take you a couple tries if you haven't blended acrylic paint before. This might um, be a little bit tricky on your first try, but it's definitely nice and rewarding once you do get it. I think I'm going to brighten up my right hand side just a little bit because I really want it to have a nice effect over here. So I washed and dried my brush really quick and I'm just adding a little bit more of that orange and it's okay if you go past the building just a little bit with those bright colors. That'll almost make it look like it's glowing. And then I'm just going to kind of work this into that gray. And this really makes it look like the sun has just cast this beautiful glow onto it. And then just work it right into that gray. And I'm digging that. So I'm going to go on to the next step. And what I'm going to do for the next step is I'm going to be using this same medium brush. So you want to wash it and dry it and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do next is we're gonna finish our grass. So right now you have this big black area down at the bottom and we wanna give that some kind of dimension but we still want it to remain as if it's in the dark or in the shadows. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, for the paintbrush I'm gonna use is the number 12 for this whole step. The colors that I'm gonna be using are green, black, brown, yellow, orange, and white. So I'm really using all of my colors except for blue. Um, and I'm gonna, the black is just gonna be a sparing kind of color. The dominant colors are gonna be green, brown, yellow, and orange. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start at the bottom and I'm gonna work my way up and I'm gonna work my way towards these bright highlights that I'm gonna be putting along the edges of the grass. So down here, it's gonna be dark grass, which is gonna be green and brown are gonna be your dominant colors. And trust me when I say that as this dries, it will get prettier because what's gonna happen when you're with the green on top of the black is it's gonna be kind of vibrant. And as it dries, you're gonna see that green turn into a, um, a duller color because the black is behind it. So it's gonna take on varying shades of green based on the thickness of paint that you have in certain areas. So what I'm gonna do is I'm putting green and brown on my brush at the same time, and I'm gonna be using similar brush strokes that I used here, which is gonna be these kind of fluid, um, long, kind of uh, open, droopy kind of brush strokes. And you can put them on top of each other. You uh, definitely want to make this look like it's got a lot of, life to it and a lot of dimension. And if you feel like it's going too bright for you, you just dip your brush in that black a little bit while you have those other, other colors on there. And you'll be able to detect varying shades of these pieces of grass when you have multiple colors on your brush at the same time. And you want to make sure that when you're doing this, even as you're coming up towards the top of that horizon line, that you cross over the horizon line. You don't want to stop this bottom grass right here. You want to make sure that you bring it up into your horizon line. That's the only way it's going to look natural and as if they're working together because the stuff that you see at the top is in essence these bottom pieces of grass just overgrowing. So here I go. I'm continuing to make these really big pieces of grass and I want them to look really huge at the bottom because that's the grass that's closest to us. So I'm gonna to continue to just load up my brush and really kind of press hard. I reload it, you, you can see I'm reloading maybe every four or five brush, you know, pieces of grass. So this way it really gives it some nice um, thickness to it. Um, and I just keep moving. I keep moving. My brush doesn't stop only to only to reload. Even when you get in front of the lighthouse right here, you still want to have these little poke ups of these new colors that you're adding to the canvas. Um, that's again how it's going to look the most natural. And now that I'm getting into this upper area, I still want to use more of the green and brown to add almost like a base 
kind of coat to these. But in a minute, once I get enough green and brown on here, I'm gonna start introducing um, the sunset colors. And you can see, I'm not terribly concerned that I have a green spot on every piece of grass. I wanna make sure that these are just intermingled with the original pieces of grass that I put. These are not meant to be the same pieces of grass, only now we paint them green. These are meant to be additional pieces of grass. So you can really just have fun with this and continue to add these really long and full and you know filled with life kind of um, brush strokes and pieces of grass. Again, I'm still at the moment using green and brown. I'm not really using black at this point because I know that I'm trying to get it a little bit lighter as um, I'm building this towards the um, highlighted area that I'm going to add in a minute. Um, so just kind of continue to add these until you feel like you have a good representation of the green and brown. And once you do, this is when you're going to start to add those additional orange and yellow. I'm reserving my white for last. I don't really want to taint my brush with the white yet because I know right now I have green and brown and a little bit of black on my brush. If I start to use white right now, it's going to end up being really muddy and murky and I don't want to do that. So I'm just going to go into the yellow and orange. And again, I'm not going to be terribly concerned about, oh, I want a bright spot right there. I'm just going to kind of have fun and intermingle some of these really vibrant tones throughout this grass. And I know I really want it kind of as if that it's on the other side of this grass. So I'm just kind of doing it in the little peek through spots. You can do it on some of the grass. You know, I'm doing it on some of these edges here, but you don't want to overload this, this bottom or this, you know, the side that we're on with a whole bunch of the orange and yellow. You really want to um, look at it as something that's happening because the sun is going down over on the other side. So I'm not overloading it. I just really want to kind of um, give these little highlights of it every now and again, maintaining that it's, you know, really predominant on the other side of the grass over there. And now once I've got a good amount of that showing, I think I'm going to pop a little bit into some of these pieces just peeking out over here just so this grass you know has a progression from dark to light and then once I have that now I'm going to start to touch my brush into that white and the white is just going to add just a couple more pops of brightness to it maybe white yellow and orange you, again you can make it as vibrant as you want um, I kind of I'm looking for mine to be on the more subtle side, um, but if you feel like you want yours to really pop with a ton of these vibrant um, sunset colors or feel like it's still kind of light out, um, you can certainly add more of this. And the, and the white definitely helps to add a little bit more dimension to some of these leaves um, or some of these bits of grass that are closer to us, um, allowing you to feel like you've got a little bit of a dimensional element to it. So right now I'm just kind of adding a little bit of white and green onto some of these pieces that have, um, that are just over the edge here. And that way it really is leading the viewer from the bottom of the canvas almost right into where that lighthouse is. So just another minute here as I'm just kind of adding just a few more pieces of this, these highlighted um, little pieces of grass, maybe a touch more over here. When I get into these little details, it's so hard to stop because every time I add another new one, I'm like, oh, I like that one. Let me add some more. Um, so when I'm trying to teach you guys to stop. It's really tough to do that. Um, but I think I'm pretty happy with this. So once you get to a place where, where you're feeling good, um, we are gonna use that small brush for one more little step 
Um, so you can put this, if, if you can put your brush down, yes, even though I can't, um, once you're done with this step, you can put this brush away in your water cup and take out your small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so the next step to this is adding the light in your lighthouse. So the two colors I'm gonna be using are white and yellow. Um, and I'm using my small brush, my number zero. And the trick to this is don't use a lot of paint. <laughs> um, I'm gonna start with just a tiny, tiny bit of white paint and so little that I dipped my brush and now I'm gonna wipe it off on the side of my palette. And what I wanna do is I'm gonna illuminate the center of my light, of where my lighthouse, where I would have my light, and I'm gonna do that with white paint. Now, if you touch the, um, the ray, uh, whatever these are, the po posts, um, it's okay because the light would shine on those posts. So even if you have a little bit of that light going over them, that's awesome. That's gonna make it look more natural. Um, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm adding, I put a touch of water on my brush and I'm watering down my white just a little bit. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull white paint out in, this is my nucleus, so I'm gonna pull it out in the directions that I would think it would shine. So I know obviously that you would have one here, but then you'd have one maybe over here and maybe one up here. Oops, I had a little bit of black on my brush there. No worries, we can hide that with a little bit of white paint. And I'm gonna put maybe one coming out here. And wherever you do and you're not, if you're not totally sold on what you just did, you can always paint over it. So don't be afraid of this step because the base of the lighthouse is just black lines anyways. So don't be afraid that you're gonna do something wrong here because you can always paint over it. And once I have the white on there, if you use just a tiny, tiny touch of the yellow, that can act as like a glowing element to it. So you can put just a tiny bit of yellow around the base of that light. I'm gonna add just a touch more white in the center of it because I, I think I overdid the yellow a little bit. So I'm gonna add just a little bit of white and the combination of the white and the yellow is gonna make it look like it's glowing. Um, and if you need to, after you feel, you know, after you get this, this on here, if you feel that you need to brighten it or dull it or whatever the case may be, just let it dry for a minute and you can go back over it with whatever, whatever colors you need to. Um, but just go slow and do a little bit at a time. Um, the darker your sky is behind, the more vibrant this is gonna look. If you have a, if you have a light sky, this will, this is just going to act as a little bit of an accent um, and you can keep fiddling with it and make it um, glow as much as you want. But I like how I can see mine kind of on top of these little black railings um, and that's all I'm going to do. So that's going to conclude that part and we have one final step and it's going to be with a small brush. So once you get done your light in your lighthouse, wash and dry your small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so the last step to any good painting is to sign it. So I'm gonna be using my small brush. Um, I usually sign my paintings in black, but the bottom is really black here. So I'm gonna use um, white, yellow, and orange to complement my sunset. I'm gonna be using my small brush, white, orange, and yellow, and I usually sign mine in the bottom left or the bottom right. I'm gonna sign mine in the bottom left here. I do my initials. You could certainly do the date, you could do your first name, you could do whatever you would like as your identifying mark. This is your painting, so you, you label it however you want to label it. 
And that is going to conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you love your painting and I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.